talk. Please welcome Vincent, who's going to tell us how to do monads in Python. Thank you. Try again? Yes. Cool. Uh, so my name is Vincent, and I'm going to talk about monads in Python. So I'm a software engineer, and I have around four years of experience in Python. And it happens that I'm a big fan of functional programming. So monads have a pretty bad uh, reputation in the world of programming, but I have some goals for this talk. It's to show that at its core, monad is a, is a simple but powerful concept, and that monad can be leveraged in Python. So I have some warning to give. Uh, this talk will be more practically inclined than theoretically rigorous. Uh, so Let's start with a motivating example. Um, so let's say that we, ha we, we want to time some functions, that is to, to measure the time of execution of some functions. Uh, one way you can do it is to, uh, is to create a function decorator like this, which starts a timer be be before the execution of the function and ends the timer after the execution, and then re returns the result and the time of execution. So let's have some, some functions, and let's use our, our new decorator. So one problem I have is how to change this, how to change those functions and get the total time of execution. Um, so one of you, one obvious way to do it would be just to, to call the functions sequentially like this and unpack. The, the results, the intermediary results, and the times of execution, and just sum the times. So there are some things which could be improved. Uh, first, we need to repeat the logic of unpacking the value and time at each step of the computation. And as programmers, we don't like repeating things. Uh, something else which we need to repeat we need to, to repeat the summation. In this case, we need to sum twice. So let's introduce a function that I call bind, and which takes, uh, which has a, as arguments uh, a tuple uh, of, of some value and the time of execution, and a function f. Uh, so we, you can imagine that the time which is called in the first which is stored in, in the first argument is the time that has been computed and accumulated so far. Uh, so the bind, the bind function is just going to apply the function on the value which is stored on the left at the zero index of the tuple and compute the, the, the new time of execution and then return the result and the, the time we, we had before and the new time of execution. So. With this bind function, which abstracts away the things which were repeated before, we can rewrite our example this way. And t uh, contains the, the total time of execution. OK. Um, one thing which is less nice here is that we are nesting binds, and it can be a bit harder to, to read. Uh, so. We, we can keep this same approach and uh, use a more object-oriented approach instead. So instead of using uh, plain tuples, let's, do, let's define a class time value, which just wraps a value and the time of execution. And let's define a bind method, which does the same thing as before, but just returns a new time value object this way. Uh, so we have to update our our previous decorator to, uh, to take this into account, to take the new class into account. 
and we can arrive to these results, like write this, uh, uh, solve the problem this way. So it's the same as before, but we are chaining methods instead of nesting functions, which can arguably be easier to read. Uh, so what did we just do? We just invented a monad, the time value class. But we still don't know what is a monad. So let's, let's try to get a sense of what it is. Uh, so monad is, is a general concept with time value being one instance of it. It can be seen as, as a design pattern uh, which helps us compose functions with effects. And in this case, effect means like uh, ha measuring a time of uh, execution. So there is, there is a useful analogy, which is to say that, uh, so you have a monad and you have monadic values. So for instance, uh, a plane value is, is an integer and the monadic value is, is a plane value plus uh, time of execution. So it's, it can be useful to see a, monad, a monadic value as a, 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 a value plus a context. So what is it good for? So make composition of functions easier. So as we've seen, it, it made uh, the composition of functions with uh, time measurements easier than before. Uh, it avoids repeating computational patterns. And it part it's particularly useful when you have a pipeline of operations like we had before. So how to define a monad? Uh, okay, so uh, normally you have to define what is called the unit function uh, or constructor. So it, its role is simply to, to take a plane value and transform it into a monadic value. Uh, define a bind function which uh, encodes the logic of applying your function to uh, a monadic value. So I, I just mentioned here that uh, theoretically speaking, you, you, you should make sure that unit and bind uh, comply with some rules, some laws, but I'm not going to, co to cover that here. And it, it's pretty, it's like those rules are, are quite intuitive. Um, so yeah, so if we go back to our time value example, so unit here is, is simply the, the constructor that we have. And bind is just yeah the, the, the bind method that we that, that, that we've seen before. So let's go ahead with another example. Okay, uh, so let's imagine that we have a code like this, which like we have a sequence of computations, and at each step of the computation we can have non values. And in this case, we can find ourselves uh, check, checking for nuns very often. Uh, so for instance, let's say we are coding a social network and we have a user object and we want to get uh, the friends of the first friend of this user. Um, so in this code sample, we, uh, we, repeat, we have to repeat uh, the if else non guards, which can be a bit cumbersome. So the question is, can we abstract this away with a monad? And we, yes, we can. Uh, we can with the so-called maybe monad. So uh, the maybe monad is, is one of the most simple and common monads that you can encounter. So what is the idea behind it? So the idea is that you can have two kinds of values, uh, either full or empty. Empty corresponds to the non-value. If an empty value is encountered during a computation pipeline, just, just re-forward it. Don't, don't, don't even try to apply uh, to bind more functions. And this allows us to not to check for none at every step. So I'm going to show you the codes, so, and hopefully this will be more clear. So let, let's try to define a, a maybe class. So it's, it's simply going to be, maybe it's simply going to be a wrapper around a value that we store in, a, in an attribute. And unit is simply the, 
the constructor. Bind. So if self.value is none, we had, that means that we had at some point encountered uh, uh, some computation which returns, which returns the empty value. So we don't need to do anything more. We just, we can just return, we can just return it. On the other hand, if, uh, if the, the monad is, if the maybe monad is, is full, we can proceed with applying the f function. So we apply it to the self.value attribute. Um, so here there is a small distinction to make, uh, depending whether on that, uh, whether f returns a maybe value or uh, whether it returns uh, a plain value. Uh, so if it, if it returns a maybe value, I, ju I just return the maybe value. If it returns a plain value, I, I wrap it uh, around the, the unit constructor. So the reason I do this is, the, is to be able to, to, to ensure that we return maybes and that we will be able to chain more binds in the computation. Uh, so a some note for our monad experts. Here I'm just conflating bind and map. Um, and we can rewrite our previous example uh, with the bind method this way. Uh, so we, we just take the, the, the initial value props and uh, wrap it into the, the maybe constructor and apply successive binds on it. Uh, so what's nice here that you, is that we can chain functions without non-guards non because the non-check the non is, is done once and for all in the, uh, in the maybe uh, monad code, in the bind function, in the bind method. Uh, is there a way that we can be more concise? And yes, we can by using the, the dynamics of Python. Uh, so very quickly, because I think I'm lacking time. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so, okay, the idea is that instead of doing binds of lambda dot method, what I really want to do is, is maybe you need dot method. This, this could be more compact. So, and a natural idea that we can, ha that we can have here is to use the, the get at magic method. Um, so, okay, I'm not going to get into the details here, but by defining uh, get at in some way in the maybe, uh, in the maybe class. Uh, so there is some distinction to make if uh, the field which we, we are trying to access is a function or not, but the idea is the same. Uh, we can rewrite our example this way. Uh, one thing to note is that this uh, get at thing is independent of the monad we are considering. So we, we could use it on over monads. Uh, of course, there is the downside that there is some uh, performance penalty with, by using such a thing, and it can be, make the code harder to reason about. Um, so now I'm going to talk about uh, the notion of monad comprehension, which is a bit experimental. Uh, so what we are going to see here is not production ready. Uh, so uh, let's, let's reconsider our time value example. Uh, everything went well because we had a linear pipeline. By that I mean uh, at every, every step of the computation, we only needed the previous, the result of the previous step. But it's not, all, it's not always the case. For instance, here we have a pipeline where uh, we depend, the final value that we are interested in is the, is the first value that we computed. So in the non-monadic version of the code, it would be trivial to do so like this. But with the monadic version, uh, it would be more involved because you will, you will need to, uh, to nest binds in order to create a, a closure where you can keep x0 in the scope. So uh, can we have something uh, friendlier than that? Than that? Uh, okay, so what I really want to write is this. Uh, so this might be mind bending, but my idea is that 
I would somehow, I would like to, uh, to modify the meaning of the list comprehension syntax in order to use it not only on lists, but on any kind of monad. So uh, in this case, the time value uh, would be a time value and not a list. And for x0 in fast one, it would read as x0 equal fast one dot value. Uh, okay, so, so this intuition, so I'm not going to get into the details, but this intuition comes from the fact uh, that lists are monads and uh, a list comprehension can be, can be rewritten in terms of unit and bind. Um, so the idea is to, to generalize the, the syntax of, uh, of list comprehensions to, uh, to comprehension on any, on any monad. Uh, so if some people are used to Haskell, this is very similar to the, the do notation. Um, but there is a catch. Python doesn't, doesn't allow us to uh, overload the meaning of comprehensions. So the solution I came up with, I mean, I took inspiration from something. So the, the solution which was found was to use AST transformations. So uh, a small reminder, when you are executing a Python program, uh, it goes this, roughly this way. So you have the Python source, source code, which is scanned and passed into a, an, abst an abstract syntax tree. It's, it's then compiled into Python co bytecode and it's then interpreted. So uh, by AST transformation, I mean doing something like this, like taking an AST, transform it into a new AST, which corresponds to, to a new code, and then compile it. So with this technique, you can pretty much like make Python, Python do whatever you want. Um, so, the way I did it, I implemented it uh, is with a, uh, a function decorator uh, which expects as argument uh, a, a class which is expected to have uh, a unit and bind method. And, uh, and given this class, uh, decorates a function and transforms uh, the, uh, the semantics of the of list comprehensions. So I, I haven't put the code of the decorator here, but uh, I can show, show it to people who are interested afterwards. And it's available on GitHub. Um, so it would work this way. Um, uh, the non-linear pipeline that we had before could be rewritten this way. So we have, we have some, we need to, to put the code in some function f and decorate it with uh, the monad comprehension decorator uh, with the time value class. And this way, uh, what looks like a list comprehension will uh, actually be uh, a time value. Uh, we could, so let's see another example with the maybe monad. Uh, so here we're just summing like uh, maybe five and maybe six, and what we get is uh, maybe 11. So f returns a maybe, not a list. And for x in maybe five, reads as x equal maybe five dot value. Um, still with the maybe monad, but uh, with, with one of the value, which is the, uh, in fact the empty value. We should get the empty value in the end, and it's, it's indeed what we, uh, what we get. So now, we, this is the solution to the non-linear the, the non pipeline problem. So conclusion, takeaway. So I hope that you are somehow convinced that Monad is not that complicated. Uh, simple monads are simple to implement. And again, what I'm saying is not, here is not absolute truth. There is many ways you could implement monads. Uh, monads are not as alien as you, 
as one may think. Uh, for those, who know, those of you who know Twisted, like the, the deferred object is actually a kind of monad. Uh, there are some, some, maybe, some maybe monads equivalent which are found in other mainstream languages such as Rust, Java. Uh, promises are kind of monads in, uh, in JavaScript. Uh, the link query syntax is very close to monad comprehension in C sharp. Uh, so here are some references from which I took heavy inspiration. You can find the code on GitHub. And thank you. And we have five minutes for questions. Ah. If you're leaving the if you are leaving the room please do it quietly so people can still listen to the questions thank you Comment Non, enfin, c'est moi qui l'ai appelé comme ça. Enfin, c'est juste un problème que tu as. Euh, um, right quand tu as une suite d'opérations, tu as une opération 1, 2, 3, et euh, ton opération 3, elle dépend de ton opération 1. Ah, Alors que dans un truc, un, le truc que j'ai appelé, appelé linéaire, c'est euh, 2 dépend de 1, 3 dépend de 2, euh, etc. Et, euh, c'est génial. Ouais. D'accord. Vincent. Cool. Cool. 